Hi everyone, I'm going to go over what you should be doing in class today. First and foremost, you need to continue and preferably finish painting your watercolor box. When it's done being painted, you can outline or add details with a Sharpie or colored pencil. If the paint is wet, I don't recommend trying to outline or add those details with a colored pencil. If you need to move forward though, the best thing to do would be to go use the hair dryer on your project just a little bit so that it's dry enough for you to outline um, or go over it with the colored pencils. Once that's done, you can start cutting it out and you just cut out the whole box all the way around the edge. And once again, make sure it's dry before you try to assemble it. You need to fold on all of the lines. Um, they're just all the black lines. I think you if you fold it, it kind of puts itself together. But if you have questions or need help, Jason can help you with the assembly part. Um, and you need to glue it together. It glues one tab at a time, just like the Zentangle sculpture. You have to do a little bit of glue on the tab, hold it with the part that it connects to, and sit there and hold it for about 20 seconds before you move on. It's a lot easier to assemble than the Zentangle sculpture, I'll tell you that. Um, it's not as hard to figure out, um, and it also um, it's less steps. So um, assemble it. Once it's assembled, it should have have the box should stay should open um, so it doesn't glue itself closed or anything like that it should be a little box that you can open like that um, and then double check make sure your name and block is on it um, that can get turned into the finished work basket and then make sure you do the self-reflection for it on classroom once all that's finished, you can start on the dragon eye drawing. So I'm going to go through what that involves um, for those people that will be ready for that today. So for our dragon eye drawing, um, this is going to be um, kind of a partially imagination um, drawing, but also a chance for you to show off some of the skills that you've been working on with um, kind of good composition, line quality, value, color, um, knowledge, that kind of thing. So um, the instructions for this are up on the poster file along with the drawing paper. So there's kind of like step by step on here. If you want to make sure that you um, do everything kind of in the order that you should do it, pretty much we're drawing um, the shape of a dragon eye. Um, and the, the eye should be near the center of the paper. It should be about the size of your fist. If you draw it too small, you will spend the whole time just drawing scales forever. And that'll just, um, it's not going to be as interesting as if you have that um, eye part actually be the focal point. So um, eye shape, you get to decide. The um, example is just a suggestion. You don't have to just copy that. Um, I prefer you kind of put your own twist on it. And then um, start going around the eyelids. Um, make sure you add like another, you know, kind of like a couple lines for eyelids. And then you start doing scales around it. Um, and your scales can be whatever shape you want. I would change up the size a little bit, maybe right around the eye. And then once you move out a little bit, you want to kind of pick a standard shape, maybe change it up a little bit, but I would definitely say as you're moving out, make sure your scales um, are not huge, but a pretty good size because otherwise you'll be coloring this forever. So then the scales should just continue off to the edge of the paper, or if you want to um, do some kind of border at the edge of the paper to kind of stop it, that's fine. I'll show you my example here in a moment. And then you're going to add some kind of interesting pupil. It can be whatever kind of shape you want. And then you're going to go back over the whole thing and um, outline everything with a Sharpie. So I would encourage you to use the regular size Sharpie um, just because it's a, you know, it's a little bit thicker of a line. And you might think about making some of those lines a little thicker than others to change up that line quality. And before you start coloring, you want to erase all your pencil lines. So it looks like you drew the whole thing with a Sharpie and it doesn't look um, pencil-y and, and Sharpie-y. Um, when you're ready to start coloring, I want you to actually choose a specific color scheme. We have written down color schemes in your color theory notes. You should have a color schemes worksheet that you did that has lots of choices on it. Warm colors, cool colors, analogous colors, complementary colors. You could do a split complementary. You could do a double split complementary, which would give you four different colors to work with. You could even do monochromatic. Um, it's completely up to you, but you need to choose an actual color scheme so that I know you know, you know color schemes. And then um, you are going to write your color scheme somewhere. You could do it in your border like I did. Um, you could do it on the back. I don't really care where you put it as long as I know you know what you're doing. And then um, you can start coloring. Um, and let's pretend <laughs> that I drew my scales all the way out um, to my border. But that's what I meant by, you know, you can have a border to stop it. When you start coloring, um, I'd like to see you using some gradation. So that's the pressure with the different um, colored pencils. Um, you don't have to use colored pencil for the whole thing, but I would like to see some gradation in there. So that means in some parts, please use colored pencil. Um, if you want to use marker in other parts, that's fine. Um, but gradation is part of the grade. So make sure that you do it in some places, whether it's on the scales or in the um, iris, which is the colored part of the eye. 
Um, and then certainly blending multiple colors in together is going to give you more interest. So, you know, you might think about blending two shades of green or two shades of um, blue or even two colors that you know mix well together, right? So um, not complementary colors, those will not mix well together unless you're looking for a brownish shade. Um, so blending colors in there together, that is one of those things that's going to bump you to that A level. If you just color the scales just like a flat color, like no blending, no gradation, you're looking at a C for the project. So just um, to let you aware, kind of like what kind of level we're working at. Um, and then if you get this far, which I don't think you should probably on Wednesday, um, but probably on Friday, if you want to go back with a little black, you can kind of see up around the um, iris and a uh, little bit of black to kind of um, darken some of the shading, kind of add a little bit more contrast. Um, more contrast equals greater interest. And so that is what we will be working on um, when you finish with your watercolor box. So you're getting graded on meeting those project requirements for drawing, your coloring, and your craftsmanship. Okay, so just to review and make sure you know what you should be doing, primary job is to make sure that watercolor box is finished and turned in, um, including the self-reflection on classroom, and then get started on that dragon drawing, dragon eye drawing. Um, if you want to make sure you're staying on track, having everything drawn out by Friday um, would be a good idea. Remember, you don't have school on Thursday. Friday, you'll have um, that time to finish up your dragon eye drawing, and then we're moving on on Monday. Um, so it might be um, a good idea. The dragon eye drawing would be a good thing that if you needed to take it home over the weekend, you can do that as well. Okay, if you have um, deep burning questions that um, no one can answer but me, feel free to email me. Otherwise, um, make sure to ask Jason if you have questions, and I will see you on Friday.